What's going on guys, it's Stevie J and today I'm gonna to be shooting a day in the life video of what it looks like to run our agency, Digital Aux. We're basically a social media marketing agency, a performance ad agency and appointment setting for medical clinics across the United States. Now, right now we do have right around 25 to 28 employees. We have almost 200 clients. Uh, we've been in business for over five years. One thing I wanna let you guys know though is when I started Digital Ox, I knew absolutely nothing. I barely even knew how to write a business email. And it took me a long time to even get to 10K a month. Now we're pushing past 400K a month consistently. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like day in the life now, how the operation runs now, and how we're basically, how basically my day looks like. And we're really trying to get to eight figures. So that's the number one goal right now is eight figures. I'm gonna show you how I think about things, how I run through the day, what my day looks like, and uh, just be as transparent as possible. Real quick, I woke up at 6 a.m. It's right around 6.20 right now. Um, first thing I do is really just drink water. I'll walk outside real quick with Kai. Kai, come here. Hey, Kai, come here. He's being really bad. Sit, sit. Say hi, give me your ball. So I'll let him run around. I'll just come out here for like five minutes, walk around, and then pretty much uh, get straight into it. One thing I do avoid is I typically avoid my phone until at least like 10 a.m. Um, avoid my phone, pretty much just drink water and get straight into work. That's pretty much my morning routine. That's what it's been like for the last few years. Um, after I have a deep work session, which is usually about 6.30 to 8.30, then I'll hit the gym and get a really good workout, which I'll show you guys and then get right back into the day, into the meetings and everything that's going on. So this is basically my house setup. Everything is work from home now. We used to have an office in San Diego before COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID. I moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I pretty much work right here in the living room. This is where it all goes down. I absolutely love working here because of the lighting that comes through. Here's a cool little award we just got for 85,000. Uh, we had a lot of growth, number 33 in the industry, Digital Ops 380, super cool. So it's a little past 8.30, about to head to the gym, have our first meeting. My first meeting is at 11. Uh, I have a sales call and then at 11.47, which is an awkward time, we have our daily team meeting. It's 10 minutes long with the entire company. After that, I have another sales call at 12.15. And then I, I have an interview at one o'clock with a data analytics individual who's really gonna help us um, really build better systems to track our data and to make better decisions in our agency for acquisition and for our clients. Um, we also, then I have a little lunch break and then I have a sales call at 2.30, then I have another sales call at 3.30. And that's pretty much what today's going to look like. Um, one thing is I love working pretty focused, undistracted for the first two hours of the day. And then I can roll into a workout where I can go all out. By the time I come back, I'm completely fresh. Like I didn't even work this morning. And so I'm ready to go at it again. Another thing too is, uh, I've been avoiding coffee until right before I hit the gym. When I used to wake up and just drink coffee, I felt like I did have bigger crashes. So I hydrate, work, and then I get all caffeinated for the gym so I can have a super strong workout. And it's loving and new appearance. I'm about to run you through the leg day. Yep. You know these. I'm well prepared. Let's see what he's got planned for the leg day. So in terms of the split, I have found that having a four day split, two upper body, two lower body, has worked best for me. So I'm only lifting four days a week. It is intense as you can see. And then obviously rest three days out of the week. Stretch, walk, mobility, things like that. Always a good time with this guy. Jake, where's your speed? Jake, 
Are you, uh, you looking sharp right now? I'm looking sharp as fuck. You wanna jump on this 11? Let's do it, I'll send you the, the zoom. Wait. All right, so just got back, obviously from the gym, took a quick shower. I'm actually about to chug a bunch of water because sorted a lot in that session, but have our first sales call at 11. Right after that, I'm jumping on our uh, team meeting, which happens Monday, Wednesdays. No, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, from there, it's basically sales calls and meetings, which I'll break down further. But another tip um, that I wish I would have done earlier is uh, record all your sales calls. Zoom calls, sales calls, qualifying calls, record all of them. Um, it's important not only for you to listen to them, to see obviously where you can improve. Like I've realized myself that I can say um too much. Now that I listen to my calls, I'm like, all right, I need to cut that out. Other things too is the more sales calls you build up, when it does come time to hiring a new sales rep, a new closer, they're gonna have so much um, to learn from. They're gonna have so many recorded calls to go through. And so part of training and bringing on a new sales rep is just having them go through dozens of calls, closes, fails, objection handling, clients that should have been closed that weren't closed, put it all in there and uh, it's powerful. How you doing? I'm good, yourself? Doing amazing. This is uh, Jake. I have him on here for training purposes, if you will. Uh, but um, yeah, great to have you on the call. Quick background on our company. We've been highly specialized in medical pain management for the last six years. We do have over 170 active offices across the United States. We're number 380 fastest growing companies in 5,000 this year. Most of our growth has been from word of mouth client referrals just due to our effectiveness. We do have over 30 full-time employees. I think the main thing here is we didn't start this yesterday. Yeah. We've been in this game for a while and uh, we're definitely number one. Um, you know, we're driving in knee traffic, not knee traffic, high, high case fee regen. <clears throat> this is how we generate these types of numbers just alone from our, from our marketing. But obviously you got to get people in who not only have the condition, but also have a way to mm. pay as well, right? Next Three months, month, month, and then give us 30 days. I guarantee you will outperform whatever you're currently doing. And if not, we'll refund you. Thursday the 10th at one. And yeah. then also just to get a, a free jump on it, I'll have our team send you the contract. So you okay. can get your attorney yeah. Yeah. today or tomorrow. If there's any questionnaires, you want to do that ahead of time so we can have it, I'll do no, that. We just walk, we walk you through it. You fill it out on your own time. Gotcha. We okay. just want to make sure you fill it out properly. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Cool. So you're going to yeah. get a notification and everything. All you got to do is just jump on the Zoom just like you did this one. Yep. Okay. okay. What was that? Miss the last part. All you got to do is just jump on the Zoom just like you did this one. Just being in, in, on a computer. Yep. It's going to be our account management team, our coaches, and then we'll see you Thursday at one. Sounds good. All right, Doc. Thanks for all okay. you. Thank you, man. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, guys. So I just finished the first sales call. We did close them. Super cool. I did miss our meeting, though. The call went way too long and ended up me missing the meeting. The meeting, I really want to show you guys because I feel like we have a very strategic, strong culture and energy that we bring to these meetings. So what I'm going to do is on Wednesday, take some of that and add it to this video specifically. So just know that. Outside of that, now it's time to eat. Um, I'm eating steak, potatoes, and asparagus. Uh, I do have um, a super awesome chef who comes here twice a week, basically meal preps um, for me, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do eat it within the windows of 12 to eight. Probably getting right around 2,800 to 3,000 calories. But um, yeah, it's pretty much just going down. Nikki and Francis both had 15 schedules in the last two days. So shout out to you two. And then Andrea, 23 schedules in the Let's last two go. days. Let's go. Let's go, Andrea. Had a 10 schedule day and a 13 schedule day. So awesome job. Shout out to you. Uh, absolutely huge. Let's take a look at the leaderboard uh, this morning. Oh my, my God. God. Gabriel and Kelly. First and second place. Gabriel and Kelly Baxter, 34 shows. Chelsea and Anthony, 33 shows. Uh, so shout out to you guys for being on the leaderboard this morning. Absolutely love uh, seeing some. Some new names on the leaderboard uh, there. Gabriel's been on there a couple times. Uh, but I got Kelly up there in the mix, so uh, awesome job. Love to see that. That's all I got, short and sweet. I'll turn it over to, to Stephen and Anthony for, for you guys this morning. What's good? I feel like it's been a long time since I've been on this meeting. Um, basically, my schedule is from 11 EST to seven, and the amount of calls back to back has been six to seven in a row for the last pretty much 12 days, uh, which has been super cool, right? We're just getting a ton of sales calls. Um, obviously, we're bringing in a lot of clients, right? I think it's been what 20 clients in the last uh, three three weeks some, some number like that I need to, we have the opportunity to really just push growth quickly 
and it's going to create a lot of opportunities. It's going to create a lot of promotions. There is risk involved. Obviously, the front end offer is a big part of that, but um, I'm going to walk you through how we just execute this thing and we end up just a lot bigger, serving a lot more clients and a lot of people being promoted and just a lot of cool stuff going on. How about that, huh? Let's go. Next, we're going to get into some economics, very simple economics. Um, I actually graduated with an economics degree, didn't learn anything from it, but actually, I'm actually applying it now. So look at that. Um, so this triangle is literally what is in my mind right now. This is like how I see us really making the next scale a lot quicker, a lot more aggressive, but also very calculated using real data and numbers, not just like guesswork. Eric and Anthony's, we're, we're literally trying to hire, we're trying to create another hundred spots. That's going to create several spots, um, several promotion spots. And we just want to keep the track. We just want to keep it going because we know when the offer is so good that they can't say no. And then our back end supports this in terms of risk reversal. And then our team and our culture is so strong and our purpose and we're all aligned. We're just going to be promoting, our training solid, our hiring is solid. And then we just keep this thing. Like this is like the three, this is like the triangle that, that I'm seeing. I feel like if one of them's gone, the whole thing doesn't, it, it falls over. I'd be like $4,000 in the red to acquire a client. But if the back end numbers support it, meaning our retention, our lifetime value supports that and it's still healthy. Are you telling me we can't bring on a hundred clients in, in, in uh, six months if we don't want to? Totally good. That makes sense, guys. Am I losing no, it? Right now? No, we're down. No, no, be crazy. Okay. Cause it's like, now you can't say no, right? You right. can't, you know, the back end supports it. The numbers support it. Think about all the, now the, the recruiting, the talent, the training, the promoting going on now. And it seems obviously we're going to run into our next sort of problems and issues, but uh, these are more of the problems and issues that I'd rather face than uh, having like a slow, stagnant growth. What's up, guys? Let's get after it. Let's make the most of every single opportunity. Let's make it a great day, guys. Let's do it. Have a great day. See you Hi. guys. Hey, guys. Have a good one, guys. Hi, Bandana. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Hi, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? All good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Doing amazing. Right now, we're in a position where I really want to understand the gross profit margin and our gross LTV so I can understand how aggressive we can be on the front end in terms of acquisition. Moving forward, we are trying to achieve another 100% year over year growth in 2023, which means when you add on more labor, um, do you have some sort of system or spreadsheet that auto calculates new gross profit margins or is it like a manual process that has to be done every time? No, you can, we, I can create a spreadsheet that automatically calculates and we put in, for example, if you want to predict the future. Yeah, correct. So you do it on the basis of what has been done till now. And not only what has been done till now, but what you expect to do in the future. For example, you have done X effort. That doesn't mean that will define your future. You probably want to put in some Y effort as well, right? So then X plus Y will define what the future will be. So there are educated assumptions that are put in and that will automatically calculate all your costs, all your revenues, future revenues, future costs and future gross margins and everything. So it's all about first understanding what the business is, understanding what you're doing, understanding what you want to do, understanding um, when I say what you want to do, that will imply how you want to increase your revenue. What are the plans? Do we continue the same way? Do we increase the price? Do we increase the, the kind of product that you're providing? And then accordingly, when you know how the revenue is generated, then automatically we will know how the cost will come along. Right? Yeah. So basically what we found is obviously price point, retention, which is churn, and then volume. Those are like the three levers to growth. You retain more, you increase your price and you bring more in. The ones that were I'm hesitant on is our actual accurate gross profit margin as we scale, right? Cause it's always going to change. The more you grow, the more people you hire gross profit margin is always changing. Right. And so I'm just trying to understand that. So then on the front end offer or whatever acquisition channels we know, maybe we can even be more aggressive than we thought, which would be awesome. Meaning we can acquire, you know, in a perfect world, if we could spend three to 4,000 to acquire a client, that's awesome. Like that so thing. when you say acquisition, what acquisition are you talking about? Customer acquisition? Correct. Okay. So how much, like for example, for example, let's just say a client is worth gross lifetime value, which is LTV times the gross profit margin. Let's just say it's 30,000, right? At mm -hmm. a two to one CAC ratio in that specific model, that means that you could acquire a client. You should spend up a 3,000 to acquire a client for, at a 10 to one, right? Yeah. So it's like that, just thinking of it like that, like at what point, how can we how can we hit our numbers uh, like okay that. so i mean um what i would suggest is we can share the data that you have and um i want to see what is going on what your numbers are well, i appreciate your time um and yeah just let us do due diligence two more calls and then i will get back to you asap
keep that. Let us run, run them together, and let's see who can outperform and then remove. That's that's what I would say from every single time to every single. Client. And that's what I was hoping you'd be open to try. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, time to go for a walk. Just bought this car. Um, how long ago? Two months ago. Bought this car two months ago. Not a flex by any means. I could give a fuck what any of you guys think. But this car was something that I wanted to buy for years. This is a car that I wanted since I was younger. And um, I've been able to buy this through digital marketing, through building a real agency, through building an agency that actually provides a really good service that our clients love and are also making money on, which is why they tell all their colleagues, which is why we have so many clients. I got this by building a digital marketing agency that thrives off building a fucking strong service. So if this offends you, you'll probably never have one. If this inspires you and you work hard and you focus on the customer, focus on the customer, focus on the customer, and you'll get one of these. So right now, I am doing 75 hard, which allows me to go on a walk every single day for 45 minutes. I normally just listen to podcasts, maybe some good music. But since we're shooting this, we'll just talk agency stuff. How about that? All right, so I'm gonna give you guys four things to think about. These are four things that I think about that I feel like are big levers to growth and sustainability. First one is, how are you different in the marketplace? What is something that you can do that other people can't? When a client sees your services, are they saying, oh, it's just another one of them? Or are they saying, wow, that's different. I need that. Focus on What's your differentiator? What can you do and what are you gonna to continue to do and continue to innovate on so that you're leading the pack, you're leading the path? Put the boosters on. <laughs> so this is a super awesome park by the house that I love to walk to. Come check it out. So if you want, you can come here and bring the dog, chill, read, watch the boats and the yachts go by. Super cool. But, number two, number two, something that you should think about that I always think about is, first off, you don't need a big team to build an agency that does 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month. You can really do that with you and someone else, to be honest. But if you wanna build seven figure, multi seven figure, eight figure company, you need a team. And that's where the importance of having a super strong culture, a very clear purpose and mission, having clear values, and hiring off those, and firing off those is super important because the team, the how solid your team is, is, is pretty much gonna show you, it's gonna de depend how far you actually go in this game. So this is a people, this is a service business and it really relies on talent, ideas, execution. So focus on culture, focus on hiring talent and uh, don't take it lightly. All right, so number three, something that I think about quite a bit Obviously I was talking about it today. This is something that you should also talk about yourself is really start to track, understand and make decisions based on your back end data. So simple KPIs you wanna track, you wanna track churn, you wanna track what's the average sort of price point you bring a client in on. You wanna track lifetime value, gross lifetime value. Once you understand those numbers, gross profit margin, once you, when you, once you understand those numbers, then you can make educated decisions on the front end on how much you can actually spend to acquire a customer. You can get pretty damn uh, 
strategic with that. And so I think that alone is a huge component to us scaling to eight figures quickly is by getting our backend data so strong, we know what we want to acquire a customer for. The more we can strengthen those numbers, the more we can even spend to acquire a customer. And number four leads into your offer. So if you have an insane offer that's so damn good, your backend numbers are really, really healthy. You have a solid team, solid culture, and you're driving a service that you're the best at and your clients are saying, wow, that's what I need. You're gonna crush it. That's the game in my eyes right now. Let me know what you think in the comments. Outside of that, two pieces of advice. These are the only two things that can be very destructive to progress in business. It's only two things right now. One is the overconsumption of social media. You overconsume social media, it really starts to deteriorate your ability to focus. The second one is gonna be alcohol. The overconsumption of alcohol is just gonna do the same thing. It's gonna really deteriorate your ability to focus and and create great work and just go deep. Now, I love to party, I love alcohol. I like it all, you know? But uh, you have to find the time to get serious. You have to find the time to celebrate. You gotta make sure you don't get lost in the sauce. Being on Instagram, consuming all this social media all day and drinking, and then you realize you're not getting anywhere because your output is shit because your input is shit. So that's my two cents. All right guys, so that was basically um, what a day in the life looked like. Uh, I basically got off my last interview. I had a few more calls with our COO and our sales manager just catching up on some things throughout the day. Uh, now I'm just finalizing some new client onboardings, making sure my emails are completed and then I'm completing my schedule for tomorrow so I know exactly what I'm jumping into right when I wake up. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like day in, day out. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you liked it, didn't like it, let me know. Subscribe, I am gonna post more content. Uh, I wanna share more with you guys. And um, yeah, this was fun. <laughs>